in each of the reconstructions, um, I maintain a greater than 99% fit together in each and every case. Now, this is an impossibility on plate tectonics. There's the Permian period, about 250 million years ago. And it is the next globe down from the previous set, <coughs> set of globes. It represents the ancient Pangaean supercontinent. Um, I hope uh, you've all heard of these terms, Pangaea, Gondwana, you probably haven't heard Rodinia. And on an expanding Earth, this represents the time when all of the oceans have been removed and we have a complete continental crust encompassing the entire Earth and in this particular model at around about 50% of the present Earth radius. There are no modern oceans. All we're left with is uh, 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 all of the volcanic material that previous, was previously injected into the, into the ocean crusts has been returned to the mantle along with the majority, m most of the ocean waters and atmospheric gases. The exposed lands in this case, as I mentioned, is, the, is Pangaea. And the little uh, continental seas, or just sneak around the corner, this represents the ancient uh, continental coastal outlines. So the larger areas are the uh, lands, and the smaller areas uh, encompassed by those, that blue line is the uh, shallow continental seas. These are referred to as the Tethys, Panthalassa, and Iapetus seas. You may or may not have heard these from plate tectonics. In plate tectonics, uh, these are actually called oceans, and these are huge, big, uh, inferred oceans um, with these fragmental continents uh, surrounding them. If I could uh, squeeze around there, I could show you the uh, location of the present continents. Um, just take note of the two white areas, the pointy one is Greenland and the large white mass is uh, Antarctica and next to Greenland is the Bay of is, is Hudson, Hudson Bay from North America. Um, the Greenland and Antarctica of course are co presently covered by uh, continental ice sheets and we just don't know what the geology of these areas is so it's, but it, it, it's a good reference point to locate yourself. That's, that's Antarctica, and the, the red line, sorry about that, I'll, I'll have question times at the end and that'll come into it. Um, yeah, the red line across the middle, of course, is the equator, the ancient equator, and that's Antarctica. Throughout uh, the remainder, and back, moving back in time, <coughs> the remaining 95% of Earth history, this is where all of the continents were located, Antarctica straddling the equator, as distinct from the pole where we're supposedly uh, led to believe it was at the time. <laughs> it's showing up on here, but not on me. It's really frustrating because all this work and the, and the tests and the breaks and, and yesterday as well, so it's really annoying that it's happened. Now, basically that sequence of um, animations was the basis of my master's research, uh, just reconstructing the uh, configuration back to that Permian period um, using oceanic mapping to uh, quantify those, uh, those, each of those uh, globes. Mathematical, this is a mathematical representation of radius. Uh, determining a, an ancient radius is very simple. You just simply measure the area of each of those coloured stripes and convert that to radius. And when you, when you plot them on a, as, as a graph, they plot down this side here, and as you can see, this matches in precisely with uh, um, Klaus Vogel and also Jan Kozier from Pol Poland, who had access to these early versions of this data. Our more uh, distant uh, researchers were not privy to this data, so they weren't constrained time-wise. They weren't constrained, but it still shows a, 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 um, an expansion there. Uh, my PhD research then took that, that step further, which we'll lead on to next, by using the um, continental crust to again <laughs> define uh, the change in radius with time. This curve, for the mathematically inclined, this curve is an exponential curve. An exponential curve um, 
has a very, very long uh, and slow, steady lead up, lead up, and then a steady to accelerating increase uh, up to a rapid increase, as shown here. Uh, don't be too alarmed. Uh, this is what 2,500, so the actual uh, the age of the Earth is, is way back here. The origins of the Earth in the Archean, early Archean. Um, the rate of increase from there to there, which is 75% of Earth history, is about from zero to 100 microns per year. And the thickness of a human hair is around about 100 microns. So for that protracted period of time, we had less than the thickness of a human hair, this increase in Earth radius. From there, we had a, a steady to accelerating increase up to the present day rate of 22 millimetres per year, about this much, less than an inch. So when you uh, relate that to time, it is next to insignificant. And for those of you who have travelled overseas, uh, travelling from here to Europe, for instance, you would hardly flinch at 22 millimetres increase each year. <laughs> Moving, projecting this to the future, um, within 300 to 500 million years into the future, the radius of the Earth will then um, reach the radius, the same radius as Jupiter, the giant planets Jupiter and Saturn. You can visualise the Earth as being a wet planet, and this is distinct from the giant gaseous planets and the smaller inner rocky planets. So the Earth is to my, to, to my way of thinking, is in, is in a, a transitional phase between the rocky planet status to the giant gaseous planet status. So as, as the, the uh, radius of the Earth increases, we have a, an increased outpouring of, of the uh, volatile gases and, and, the, and the waters, and eventually this evaporates to form a huge gas cloud surrounding the, the uh, primitive, or the, the, the remnant Earth at that time, similar to Jupiter and Saturn. We probably develop rings and all that sort of thing as well. At that time, I envisage the actual expansion process will then uh, uh, stop uh, for reasons we'll elaborate on later. And uh, of course, uh, life as we know it will, of course, long since have been uh, deceased and uh, uh, evolved or progressed into something better than what we are now.